Do you know where cells come from? Well, all cells in living organisms come from pre-existing cells by a process called cell division. Now, this is interesting to think about. This means that although your body is made up of about 37 trillion cells, your body cannot build its own cells from scratch. This also means that all cells in your body originate from the zygote, which is the first cell that results from a sperm and egg fusing. We also have never successfully built cells from scratch in a laboratory, which just further demonstrates the complexity and necessity of cell division. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the two different types of cell division that occur in living organisms, mitosis and meiosis. I will also post other videos discussing the phases of mitosis and meiosis and how the steps in each process differs. Before we start talking about mitosis and meiosis, you need to be familiar with two different types of cells found in your body. Most of the cells in your body are what we call diploid cells. A diploid cell is a cell that has two sets of chromosomes. Just a reminder, chromosomes are strands of DNA. Since diploid cells have two sets of chromosomes, you sometimes see diploid cells labeled as 2N. This means two sets. Diploid cells in humans have 46 chromosomes. 23 chromosomes came from your father and 23 chromosomes came from your mother. So there are 23 chromosomes in each set. Each chromosome you receive from one parent is similar to one of the chromosomes that you receive from the other parent. Each pair of chromosomes are similar because they contain the same genes, but may have different variations of those genes. For example, both could carry the gene for eye color, but one parent could have given you the blue eye color variation, and the other parent could have given you the green eye color variation. Notice also that all the pairs of chromosomes are the same length, except the sex chromosomes X and Y. So which cells in your body are diploid? All the cells in your body, except your sperm or eggs are diploid. Diploid cells in your body include cells like your somatic cells, which are cells that make up your body like your skin cells, muscle cells, and cells that make up other tissues and organs. Germ cells are special diploid cells found in your ovaries or testes that become eggs and sperm. And stem cells are unspecialized diploid cells found in your body that can divide and become many different kinds of cells. Haploid cells, on the other hand, have only one set of chromosomes, so we usually label them with just a single N. Haploid cells in an organism will always have half the number of chromosomes as a diploid cells in that organism. The only haploid cells in your body are your sex cells. Your sex cells contain only half of the DNA found in the other cells in your body. Sex cells are also called sperm, eggs, or gametes, and they are used for sexual reproduction. Now that we understand the difference between diploid and haploid cells, let's talk about when the two different types of cell division occur in living organisms. Mitosis is going to occur any time an organism needs to produce new cells that are genetically identical to the original cell. Therefore, mitosis will occur during normal growth. It will also occur to repair tissues. For example, this newt can regrow the cells in its limbs using mitosis. Mitosis is also used to replace cells in the body. Even when you are done growing, your body is still producing new cells constantly. For example, the cells lining your gut replace themselves every four to five days. Your skin cells replace themselves every two weeks. And the cells in your skeleton replace themselves almost every 10 years. This means that 10 years from now, you will have a completely different skeleton than you have today. Mitosis also occurs during asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction occurs when new individuals are made without the fusion of sperm and eggs. You could think of asexual reproduction as like cloning. This happens in animals like sponges and jellyfish, but also is very common in single-celled organisms like protists. An example of a protist would be an amoeba. 
With that said, it is important to remember that all somatic cells in your body divide by mitosis. Now that we know that mitosis creates new cells that are genetically identical to the original cell, if the original cell is haploid, meaning it only has one set of chromosomes, what type of new cells do you think will be created if mitosis occurs? The new cells must also be haploid if they are going to be identical to their original cell. What if the original cell is diploid? Then what do you think the new cells have to be? Well, they have to be diploid as well in order to be identical to the original cell. So haploid cells make haploid cells and diploid cells make diploid cells through the process of mitosis. Now let's talk about meiosis. Meiosis differs from mitosis because it creates new cells that are genetically different from the original cell. It also halves the number of chromosomes. Meiosis always therefore begins with a diploid cell. If that diploid cell undergoes meiosis, then what do you think the new cells will be? They must be haploid because they have half the genetic information as the original cell. As you can see, meiosis takes a cell with two sets of chromosomes and creates new cells that only have one set of chromosomes. And that is a major reason it differs from mitosis. In humans, the only purpose, once again, the only purpose of meiosis in humans is to produce our sex cells. Do you remember what type of cells I said become sperm and eggs? The cells that become sperm and eggs are diploid cells called germ cells found in your ovaries and your testes. So in males, diploid germ cells in their testes become haploid sperm cells. And in females, diploid germ cells in her ovaries become haploid egg cells. This image shows the human life cycle. You start your life as a single diploid cell called a zygote. Then, through mitotic cellular divisions, you become you. When you reach puberty, germ cells in your testes or ovaries undergo meiosis to create your sperm or egg, which contains half of your genetic information. Sperm and eggs are able to create new individuals through a process called fertilization. Fertilization results in a new diploid zygote, and then the cycle repeats itself. Now, if you want to see the steps involved in mitosis and meiosis, then watch the cell division part two and part three videos.